Hey guys, welcome back to a channel where we talk about things. My name's Katie and I'm a wedding photographer here in the lovely state of North Carolina. And today I want to talk about how I create my wedding timelines. When I was first starting out, I was the second photographer. So the timeline was kind of already made. I just followed it. But now I have to make my own timeline and it's a little stressful. What it really comes down to is dependent on you and how much time you think you need between the ceremony for couple shots, bridal party shots, all of that. But I just want to give my thought process behind how I created my wedding timeline. Hopefully this is helpful. And this advice is definitely going to be geared more towards photographers, but if you're planning a wedding right now and you need to create your timeline by yourself, I know when I plan my wedding, that's what I did. This is definitely going to be helpful for you too. So let's get into the video. So as a photographer, I have different wedding packages and whatever package you choose really depends on the wedding timeline. So I'm going to use an example for an upcoming wedding. They chose my eight hour package. So I really start at this send off. If you're not having a special send off, then it really, you don't have to start anywhere. But this wedding specifically, they're having a sparkler send off. So I'm starting there and that's going to be at 9 p.m. So now I'm working my way back. My timeline, I'm going to get there at 1 and I'm going to leave at 9 after the sparkler exit. Again, this really depends on you. If you have booked a wedding, I definitely, whenever I create a timeline, I create a table. So I start at 1 and end at 9. And I put in the ceremony, what time that starts, and then the dinner slash reception, what time that starts as well. So that gives me a good kind of bones to work around. Easiest thing I think whenever you get to a wedding is to start with detail shots. So I have scheduled, I'm getting there at 1, 1 to 1.30, all details. You can walk around the venue with the dress, hang it up different places, you kind of get the lay of the land. It's a bit more chill at the beginning versus getting there and like immediately starting with bridal portraits or something. Um, definitely like details, getting ready shots is a good like segue into the day. So I like to start the day with the detail shots and it also just kind of gets it out of the way. I leave myself 30 minutes. I tell them to bring an invitation suite or save the dates. I get the rings, I get flowers, I get different things and I have 30 minutes to number one calm my nerves because I'm photographing a wedding and just be creative because I know that is a set time that I will have to do those detail shots. I don't want to start doing getting ready then try to do detail shots while the boys are getting ready so I may not have all the thing you know it's really easy a lot of the times people aren't even dressed yet so you can get shoes you can get cufflinks you can get watches you can get all of those things I start 30 minutes of the day doing all of the details the next hour is really getting ready so if you have a second photographer they can be with the boys while you be with the girls that entire hour or you can do 30 minutes with the girls 30 minutes with the boys however you want to do but i really schedule an hour because there's a lot into getting ready especially for the bride she gets in her dress she gets you know those sweet moments if her mom zips up her dress all of that and before a lot of the times brides will have you know everyone has matching robes or matching pajamas and they're toasting and drinking moments mimosas, all of that you want to get before. And you want to leave plenty of time for those pictures. The next hour, what I have done, I actually have a second photographer for this. So I definitely would tweak it if you're by yourself. But for the next hour, so two to three, I'm doing bride and all of her bridesmaids and bride and her immediate family. For this wedding, it's in winter. <laughs> it's in winter. I wanna make sure to get as many photos beforehand as possible. And I already have a list of all of her and his families and the bridal party. So I know I can get both of those done in an hour. Maybe you can do them in 30 minutes with the bride and bridesmaids, 30 minutes with the grooms and groomsmen. It just depends on you. I have a second photographer at this wedding, so I'm going to take a full hour with the bride and her bridesmaids and her immediate family. So next, I like to leave a buffer between all of those getting ready and the ceremony because I've been to a wedding where we were late. It, everyone was getting ready off site and we had to like rush to the ceremony and set up really quickly and the ceremony technically already started, we were late. So I like to leave a little bit of a buffer. So I left 30 minutes from three to 3.30 
for ceremony details and venue pictures. So then you can walk around the venue, get those nice venue pictures. I mean, they booked it for a reason, right? You gotta get those in. And ceremony details, so shots of the aisle, if they have pretty things down the aisle, maybe the guest book, people signing the guest book, things like that. And it gives you time to really set up, get the best spot, get your lighting. You have 30 minutes to do all of that. So then you're ready once the ceremony starts. Most ceremonies these days are really only 30 minutes. So this ceremony is gonna be four to 4.30. They actually had to push it up an hour. They pushed their whole wedding up an hour, which I'm really happy about. And I suggested that to them that they would have more light after their ceremony. This wedding is in winter, so the sun sets a lot earlier and they were gonna have their ceremony at five. And so like the sun will be setting at their ceremony. Anyway, they pushed it up an hour. So ceremonies from four to 4.30. Sometimes ceremonies only take 30 minutes. For the next 15 minutes, we're doing joint family photos. So that means bride and groom with their immediate family family, grand grandparents, all of that. 15 minutes, which sounds like a lot, but if you remember, we did all of the bride and her immediate family before the ceremony. And I think that's, for me, really critical because we're trying to get as many photos done before the sun sets, especially in winter, okay? So 15 minutes for family portraits. Then we have 30 minutes for combined bridal party. That's all of their friends, their siblings. It's a bit more fun, not as formal. We're going to do some formal photos, some, you know, jumping in the air. It might take a little bit longer, but if it doesn't, great. Again, you just want a lot enough time so you're not rushed. Bride and groom portraits I have scheduled for 30 minutes. Now, in my mind, when I was first starting or first writing up this timeline, I thought an hour. They need a whole hour to themselves, but 30 minutes is really enough to get a lot of of good pictures of both of them together. So again, the sun is setting at like, I don't know, 550 at this time. So 515 to 545 is their pictures. If it was an hour, it, we would be past sunset. So we're gonna get some outside, some inside, just 30 minutes for the bride and groom. That's just something that I thought I would need an hour for, but I was advised to only have 30 minutes. The reception starts at 530. The bride and groom portraits are 515 to 545. and. So the reception technically starts at 5.30, but we're ending right about that time. Now they'll be introduced, so you may need to make sure you're set up for that. So that's a good time to, you know, leave the bride and groom, go get set up for the introduction. A lot of the times they'll have, you know, a schedule set up. So daddy, daughter dance, cake hunting, all of that stuff. Really the reception is where you can kind of chill. They will announce literally everything. So daddy, daughter dance time, you get up and you start taking pictures. Okay, now it's time for the toast. You get up and start taking pictures. It's really primarily beforehand where you have to get really nitty gritty with the timeline. And then the 9 p.m. sparkler send off and you are done. So that's kind of a basic rule of thumb for me. Whenever you go to the reception, you can get some reception shots, venue shots. I hope this is really helpful. I always thought that I would need you know, a lot more time for more things, but really wedding days go by so quickly. I hope this was helpful for you when creating your wedding timeline, either as a photographer or a bride and groom, if you're watching this and you're planning your own wedding, I hope this you found this helpful. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time. Bye!